Now that we've walked through a few of the reflow fundamentals, let's take a look at how a responsive project is put together in reflow. Now, before we do that, there are three things you need to understand. One, I will be showing technique, not best practice. This application is so new that technique at this stage of its evolution is more important. You guys will determine the best practices. Two, if you are new to responsive web design, the key is the breakpoint, not the device. Each breakpoint you set is a point in time where a design decision must be made. These decisions are not made around it being a smartphone, a desktop, or even a tablet. Three, Reflow is a responsive web design rapid prototyping tool and is not production ready. Finally, the usual disclaimer that Reflow is beta software. There are bugs, and frankly, there are workflows that are convoluted, non-existent, or are even in the process of being developed. Feel free to log any bugs you find or make any suggestions you may have with Adobe. They do listen. With that in mind, let's get started. The first thing I did was to add the background image. And the background image was to added to the body element here. And in the styling area, you can see there's the paper. And I laid a gradient over it, and you can see the gradient right there. So it's a gradient with some transparency. It's white to black with transparency. And the neat thing about the background colors is that I can change their order. If I want to take the gradient and put it under the paper, all I have to do is grab that little gripper, and you can see I can change the order. So these are clickable and draggable. That's kind of a neat little thing. Okay, let's go back to the layout. The other change I made was to set the container width right here to 1250 pixels. This accommodates widescreen display. So if you get a massive display, at least you're going to stay within a defined area. The fonts chosen in the document were from the Adobe Edge web fonts and from the computer system. The headlines were set in League Gothic from the Adobe Edge web fonts, and I just used the 400 weight because League Gothic is pretty dark. And for the body text, what I used was good old Arial. And one of the things to keep in mind is when you're working with uh, Reflow, you get your choice of uh, measurement system for text, and I went with M's. So that way we can have the text respond as things change. As well, I aired out the body text by adding some space between the lines of text. Now the first breakpoint is right here at the 1250 mark. And if I uh, click, on, click on it to come to it, you'll see that I made a change to the container element. So if I go to the layout, you can see the container element is set to 95%. Now what I'm going to do is just zoom out here or zoom in here to 100%. You can see there are the, there's the uh, background. Now a couple other things happened. If I go up to the top here, you'll notice that I've changed the logo and I've changed the navigation. If I bring it back out, we'll take it back to 67% and come to the default. You can see it changed there. Now the reason the logo and the navigation changed is that as I came in on the 1200, the navigation would have bumped into the logo. So what I did was I selected both of these and set their float property to centered. As well, I also added 30 pixels of margin between the bottom of the logo and the top of the navigation. So it was 30 pixels top margin. Further down the page, the sidebar, as you can see right here. Now I'm going to zoom out to 67% just to make it easier. Now the reason I'm doing the 67 and so on is simply because of the fact that I have a 720 resolution monitor here. So you can't really see a lot of the things that are going on at 100%. So with the default, you can see that I've got the sidebar here. And I come to the 1250 right there the sidebar disappears and moves down here. Now the reason for that is quite simple. Everything was going to go banging into this image here, so I decided to move it all down. Now one of the interesting aspects of Reflow that I find extremely useful is the ability to group elements. 
for instance, each of these little boxes actually is a group. And if you come down here to the canvas bar at the bottom of the interface, you'll notice that it tells me it's a group. If I click the icon, it's now a box. And each of the elements is now accessible. And once I've finished with it, I can come back, click it, and it's a group, and I can move it wherever I choose. Now, as I moved into the 900 pixel breakpoint, again, things had to change because the images were going to bang into each other. So I changed the grid to a six column and at the same time moved the images around. And then finally at 480, which is about smartphone size, if we take it up to 100%, you can see it a little better. you can see that I stacked all the images on top of each other. Now the last uh, change I made to the entire document was uh, right here. So I'm just going back to 67% and take it out to the default, was to actually move the container 5%. I added 5% of uh, top margin just to give the container the feeling of being inside the paper texture and surrounded by the background. And if I wanted to uh, take a look at it without the background, all I had to do is select the container, change the opacity to zero. Now another thing is if you want to uh, see the various elements that are inside the document, you can just go to the view menu and show edges and everything is there. If these disturb you, well you can go back to the view menu and turn off show edges. So there we go, we've got this all laid out. What about the code jockeys? Well, if you save the file and preview the file in Chrome, and by the way, this is the only application that we'll preview in, Reflow will create a number of files for you. So let's uh, just go look at it in Chrome. And it's now created, and as you can see, it's fully responsive. So if you want to do browser testing, you can in Chrome outside of Reflow. And I'm just going to uh, quit Chrome. And what I'm going to do is to show, you, show you the files that are created. So the first file that was created is uh, Preview HTML. Now when you save it for Preview in Chrome, these files actually are put inside the folder where the Reflow project is located. And first off, we get, of course, a good old doc type. So this is an HTML5 page. And you can see it tells me that this code is only meant for previewing the reflow design. This is not production-ready stuff. And it's, you know, fairly, fairly basic code. Uh, there's a boilerplate CSS file that's created, of course. And here's the reflow CSS. And again, there's the disclaimer. It's for previewing your reflow design. I'm sure that at some point this will all change, but right now, pure, pure preview. I won't argue with those of you that have, shall we say, issues with the HTML and the CSS. I'm pretty confident in predicting the code will be both cleaned up and most likely editable by the time that reflow is actually released as a full product. This is the first iteration of the beta, and if the Edge Animate experience is any indication, this will be the first of many iterations. So there you go, a deep dive into the first preview release of Edge Reflow. There's a lot to this app that is great, access to the DOM, Edge web fonts, drag and drop of content into the elements, color models, and so on. And there are features that are on my personal wish list, chief of which would be the ability to name the elements. I'm not a huge fan of box, 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 box. I don't know what's what. So what I would suggest you do is go grab a copy of Reflow, beat on it, and if you find issues, bugs, or missing features, let the Reflow team know.